Wednesday night. Kingston and I will be sharing on Wednesday night with more pictures and, and lots more things, but there's so much. Uh, Jim has a great expression. There's so much that happened and is happening even now. It's like trying to get a drink of water from a fire hose. It, it is overwhelming. And so we want to break it up a little bit and, and share with you. Lathan, thanks. Great job on the videos, man. Great job on the pictures. And, and awesome. Thank you so much. We, uh, I know where I want to get to, but I don't know how to start. <laughs> God, God was, God was so real and so precious to us. It was a great week. When we left, every one of us were strained. You know, when God touches your heart, you don't want to leave the place. And yet, you have loved ones at home. And so, it, it was a strain. And, and looking back on this whole account, it was God who led us to Widow's Might. And, and it was God who introduced us there. And so, we believe that we have a calling to go there. I walked, walked around with Lathan as he took pictures and Lord willing what we're going to try to do is this week try to get the individual pictures of the children up on the wall so that you and your family can adopt a child and have the information on them and pray for them in the coming years ahead. But I walked around with Lathan and Sometimes while he was taking pictures, I just had to go to the other side. Because God, is, God has blessed us so much. And to see those children, many, some of them, many of them, about six, seven of them, to get out of bed, you have, they have to carry them to the back Lanai area and lay them on the floor to work their limbs for exercise. And, but yet to see the joy and the love within the children. Fluffy, the, the way name Fluffy came up was that on the first day there we were standing, we had had prayer as a group up on the porch and <clears throat> one of the girls, Shakira, came up, she hugged, she hugged uh, Norman Kingston, and then she went over and hugged Stephen, and she let go, and then she hugged Stephen, and then she let go, and then she hugged Stephen. <laughs> and, and I mean, she just latched on the Stephen, and and we asked her, "You only hug Norman a little bit. You hug Stephen a lot. Why?" She said, "He's fluffy." <laughs> <laughs> so there's the name Fluffy. He, uh, it, it, it was exciting, and, and then to know that we, it was exciting, I think, for them to know that Norman was born and raised in Kingston, Jamaica, and living in the States. Now he goes back to put it up. Amen. And then it was the two white boys. So, <laughs> so by the end of the week, it was shoeless, fluffy Kingston and the two white boys. And, but what, what God did was just great, and the guys took care of me when they could keep up where I was. They, 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 they did a great job. Thank you all so much. James James is, is the brother of Christ. And if you read the book of James, James doesn't hold anything back. James, James is straightforward and he tells you exactly how you should be living as a follower of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> In chapter 1, verse 26. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves. And their religion is worthless. 
we had a great time this week. And one of the things about mission trips, if you've never been on one, you go with an attitude, we're going to help them. You go with this attitude that we as Americans, we're going to go down and we're going to make their lives better. The reality is we go and they make our lives better. Again, I want to tell you, when we go on a mission trip, we never, ever go, no matter where we go, whether it's uh, <clears throat> Guatemala, Nigeria, it can be Haiti, it can be India, it, Jamaica. It, we never go to Americanize people. Never. That's not our calling. We go to kingdomize people. The kingdom of God. That's why we go. And, and we talk about that before we go so that we never get the idea that we want them to become like us. No. We want them to become like Christ. Amen. That's what we want to do. We want them to become like Christ. And sorry about that, Latham. And you saw a picture of Stephen and I up on the front porch of that house. I had wandered up to the house because there were some guys there. And of course, Fluffy had to follow. <clears throat> couldn't get away from, couldn't go anywhere without these guys. So Fluffy and I went up to the house and, and there was a couple of guys up there and we sat down and began talking to them. And we began talking to them about their life in Jesus Christ. And there was, as we sat there talking, more guys came. And I'm thinking, okay, God, we're getting ready to have a revival preaching service right here on the front porch. Because more were drawn. And there was one guy, and it was great. He was walking up the hill, and he heard a little bit, and he stopped in the middle of the road. And the more we talked, the closer he got. But it was like he didn't want to show us that he was interested. So he was looking down the street, but yet every now and then he'd take another step towards us. And we were able to share the love of Christ and share tracts with them that they took home and, and, and to share the things that God wants to do in their life. And, and just, that was so exciting to not only physically do things, but I gotta tell you about these guys. We are not perfect. Don't, don't come to any of the four of us to think that we have all of the answers. We, we know that God has all the answers. Amen. It was like being at boys camp with these four. <laughs> because of the fellowship. We worked hard. Latham was making sure I had plenty of Tylenol or or arthritis <laughs> Aleve or do you need this pastor you do you need this are you a, don't don't you okay and, and and Norman would come by and are you okay or Stephen would would come by and goes pastor you need to sit down do you need to sit down <laughs> and even though there were some times that really physically it was tough they never complained they they never complained they never griped they they never said, I'd, I'd rather be home, I'd rather be. James says, if you, if you want to be religious, in other words, if you want to show that you're following Christ, watch what you say. Because people are going to respond to what you say. There was a young man that came up the first day. Okino. Okino was his name. Okino was probably maybe 20, maybe and at times it's hard to break in to conversate with the workers because uh, uh, most of them speak a dialect, Patois, and it's a broken English dialect. And so the first thing, and he was shoveling, he was working. And so I told the guys, I said, I want to introduce you to my cousin. Right? And, and I said, I want to introduce you to my cousin. This is Andrew. And, and I called him Andrew, and I began to, and of course, he didn't have the slightest idea who Andrew was because it wasn't him. So the rest of the week, he was called my cousin. 
He was on my mother's side twice removed by my second aunt on the third generation of my uncle. Okay. But it broke in and, and it gave us an opportunity to talk to Okino about his life with Christ. And not just that, but for them to see us involved. That gave us opportunity to talk about Christ. I went down to a corner store. And you're going to have to see one picture, which is an awesome picture. I tried to sneak away to the corner store, <laughs> which is the local ganja store. If y'all don't know what that is, we'll explain it later. Okay. It, it was the where you go to the wisdom tree. <clears throat> so I tried to sneak away, and I had tracks, and I turned around, and I've got this great picture of Lathan trying to hide behind a telephone pole <laughs> so that I feel like I'm by myself, but I'm not by myself. You know, just give me a little bit of lead way on the street. And, and we'll have to show you that picture. And, and so on the outside, these guys were sitting there smoking their ganja, smoking their weed. And I gave them tracks and just talked to them just briefly about the love of God. And, and I walked in the store and the owner was behind the counter smoking his ganja. I mean, Tuesday I woke up with a horrible sinus headache all day long. You'll see in the pictures almost every day I did not wear my glasses just because of the sinus deal. I was feeling better after I came out of there, though. You know, I was a little hungry, but man, my sinuses were great. Just, just a little. But, but the great thing was, even in the store, the owner took a track and listen to me. To be able to walk in that kind of environment and share the love of Christ. But it's through watching what you say and what you do. You, you have to be so careful as Christians. And then James writes because he writes this thing that goes along with that of true religion. Verse 27, religion that God our Father accepts is pure and faultless is this. To look after orphans and widows and their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. What are we living our lives for? You and I, we can live our lives for possessions. And I have, a, I have friends that do. You and I, we can live our lives for possessions. But today, while we're sitting here, there are 4.5, 4.5 billion people around the world that do not know Jesus Christ. 4.5 billion out of approximately 6 billion. And that is a very lenient some figures show that there's more that don't know Christ. Out of those four and a half billion, one billion of them have never heard of Christ. Four and a half billion are unsaved. One billion have never heard. There's a tribe in the upper Sahara that number 416,000, they have nothing, absolutely nothing in their language that talks about Jesus Christ. And there are other tribes like that. These are just the ones that I've read of. So what do we do? Because we can't do it all. Let's, let's be honest about that. We can't do it all. We can't. The Wednesday night before we left, a couple came to me and gave me a check. And I, I told them, I said, I, I said, you can't do this. And the husband said, yeah, we can. We've prayed about this. This is what God said to do. And it's so neat when you walk on the scene because now we see God touches this couple, this family, to give them money. You walk on the scene on Tuesday and their freezer has been broken for months 
and they can't keep anything of it. And we're able to take that money that was given on Wednesday and buy a new freezer on Tuesday that now they don't have to walk down the street and try to find, has the neighbors eaten the food we've, you know what I mean? Now they're able to keep that food there in such a nice freezer. Oh man, it, it's, they were so, it was like Christmas. There was a lady in our family that got um, bath and body lotions and things for the staff that worked there. Christmas time for the ladies. Christmas time for the ladies. We gave them those little teddy bears that you can get from Ikea that are like a dollar and a half or two dollars or whatever they are. And, and literally, like the guy said, they were walking around, never put them down. Just, and, and that's such a small gift. And we have to ask ourselves, if God says that in our religion to be pure and faultless is to take care of the orphans and the widows, then have we been doing that? And, and I look at my own life and I look at our life as a church, maybe, just maybe, God helped reduce the building size so that he would increase the heart size of us. You know? At one time, at one time, we were paying $34,000 a month in mortgage payments. And, and we look at that facility and we go, wow, what a nice facility, what a great, but we weren't doing what we should be doing with our heart because we were having to scrounge to get the money to pay the payments. And maybe, and, and we talked about this, maybe God said, okay, let me show you what true religion is. It's not about the size of the facility. It's about the size of your heart. It is not about the glamour of technology, but yet today we have some, what these guys have done with the technology is awesome. It's not about the technology, it's about the time you give. It is not about electrified instruments, even though I love the praise team and our praise team, I personally, is the best that we've ever had. And their heart of worship is the greatest that I've been around. Okay. Amen. I was listening to a larger church's praise team before I left, and I had to turn it off because they're nothing compared to ours. <laughs> Seriously. Serious. Oh, and, and, but it's not about electrified instruments as much as it's about God electing to send us. And to have those children come up and just want to hold your hand. And Shakira would run by and smack you. And laugh and run off. And then she'd come back and she'd run by and hit you again. And laugh and run off. And then while you're busy, all of a sudden, there she would be hugging you. We, if it had been possible, my house would have been full whenever I came home. <laughs> I cannot touch your heart. I wish I could. If I could touch your heart, I would take every one of you there with me. I would introduce you to every child to every worker who day after day after day spends their hours changing diapers. Many of them adult sized diapers. Washing the children. Laying them on the floor on blankets and working their legs and their arms to exercise them. If I could touch your hearts, I would take you and put you in a kitchen that has no ventilation. 
that has very, 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 very cheap pots and pans that they have to be so careful because they're so thin that it burns the food if they're not careful. And yet the woman doing that smiles when you come into her presence and is so loving. If, if I could take you with me, I would take you there and have you give them dumb, dumb lollipops and see them get so excited, not just children, but adults too, because of the sweetie that you just gave them. We went to one of the schools on Thursday morning, and I would love to take you there because we got there in time for devotion, and in devotion, they had 120 school kids lined up, standing in the sun, and listening to the devotion of one of the teachers and to the prayers, to the reading of God's word, to the singing, and not a one of them got out of line. Not a one of them moved as they stood there and listened to God's word. I will show you how hungry they are to know God. I would take you to the devotion at the orphanage and how that every time they read God's word that the children, even though they're mentally challenged, every child that could would stand when they read God's word. They may be mentally challenged, but they understand the purity of God's word. And they would stand as their worker would read the holy word of the holy God. I want you to experience that. For out of that you come to know what life is about. Out of that you understand why God created us. There's a roof that's falling in. And if we don't do something about it, this roof is going to is going to crash into the kitchen. They need a big exhaust fan put in the kitchen to, while we fix the roof, let's fix the exhaust to carry out the heat also. Their washing machine is tied to the building so that the barrel in it, the tub in it, doesn't knock the sides off of it. And they're still washing four to five loads a day. God has supplied them with a new washing machine. Praise God for that. That's taken care of. But, but I want you to go because for me to talk about it means nothing. I, I cannot express it. I cannot tell you. I cannot until you're there. And you realize air conditioner isn't all that we think it is. When you sit down and they humbly serve you the best of what they have. And you realize they were so thankful. How would you, and, and think about this just for a moment, how would you like to go to a place that because you came there, they honored you? Just because you gave up your time to go and help them, they literally honor you. Try finding that in the United States. We walked up the street by the schoolyard. And we walked and I was taking pictures of, of the goat following Stephen and Lathan. <laughs> He saw Fluffy and he followed him up the road and, and, and taking pictures of the, of the flowers. And it was, the bell rang, literally a hand bell rang for lunch. And all the kids, approximately 200 kids, come out into the playing field and, and to the playgrounds for lunch. And they're playing. And we walked by and it's so, it's so awesome because we were up on the hill and they're down where they're playing on the field. And all of a sudden, one of them stopped, and you could hear him yell, Look, white people! <laughs> so all the kids turn and wave, and we all wave back. <laughs> That's 
How would you like to go to a place that people love you just because you came? How would you like to go to a place that when you get ready to leave, emotionally it's hard? You cry. Because within a few short days, we realize that we have been with family. How's your religion? Right. Is it pure? Is it faultless? I, I can make all the excuses, and, and, and you can make all the excuses, and we can make all the excuses for not reaching out. We can make the excuse, well, we need a larger place. Well, we can go to two, three, four services. You know, it's not a big deal. We, we can do that easier than they can spend another year without a roof. We can do it much easier. We, we can do without less things than what these children can do without food. That, we can do that. But you don't realize that until you go. You don't. So I, 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 I double dog dare you to go. I, I double dog dare you to go and, and to touch lives with your life. I, I dare you, I double dog dare you to, to let God challenge your heart and to realize that your life is worth something to the kingdom. Your life is worth something because your life can touch thousands of others' lives. This is not the only opportunity we have. We have so many more. But if you've never been on a mission trip, or if you're just a little fearful of going on a mission trip, this is the place to go. Because you will be accepted. I've been on mission trips, literally where I've stared down the barrel of a rifle. Literally. I, I've been on mission trips that you get out of the car and guards are there with shotguns. I, you know? But, but if you've never been, this is nothing like that. Don't be afraid. God's, Christ said, fear not, I am with you. Amen. Even until the end of the age. Family, I've got to thank you. Thank you for letting us go. Thank you for allowing us to be your hands. Thank you for allowing us to do work for the kingdom for your sake. Thank you for allowing us to be silly boys on a silly camping trip that we saw God do not silly stuff. Now I want you to go too. I want you to go. I want you to go. We, we know with God's grace and God's help, we're going back in October to do the roof. But even before then, there are things that need to be done. That's going to be the next big project that we'll talk about what it will cost. And we'll talk about how to get the money and how to do that. But even in your own neighborhood, be the hands of Jesus. Even in your own neighborhood, be the feet of Jesus even in your own neighborhood, at the grocery store, at the filling station, be, be that shining light that Christ has said you already are. Now be it. We gave out tracts upon tracts upon tracts. We gave out little gospel of John. And there's no telling what God's going to do. And it's because of you. Because you gave. Here's the deal. I'm going to close with this. We're going to have our offering and then we're going to sing. Not, not all of us can go. Not all of us can go because for some of us it's physically impossible for us to go. 
but know that all of us can pray. And these men will tell you, even on this trip, prayer works. Prayer moves mountains. It moves 30 bags of 95 pounds each of concrete. Prayer works. And we all can't go, but all of us can pray. We all can't go, but there's many of us that can give. Now, I'm not talking about your offering. I, I, I'm not talking about that when the bucket comes by that you put an envelope in Mark, Jamaica. That's not what I'm saying because you need to be faithful to God first in your, in your tithe. You need to be faithful to God first in your tithe. There were two men that came to us and, and said and talked to us and said, you know, that family, they were so far back into the mountains there's literally no work. And they said the only way we make money is through our garden. We, we take the garden, we, we get the vegetables, we take it down to Brownstown to the market, we sell it. Could you help us to buy some seed? So there are two men, and for each one I said this, here's the deal. Here's the deal. I'm going to give you some money. But let me tell you about tithing. And I told them what the Bible said, and I made sure they understood about tithing. I said, here's what I'm going to promise you. You take this money, you buy your seed, you grow your vegetables. 10% out of everything you sell, you hold back. The 90% is yours, but 10% you hold back. The next time I come, you bring that 10% to me, and it goes to this orphanage. And you will see how God will bless you. So we left with an agreement with those two men that what they plant and what God blesses, that they will hold back a tithe. See, we don't, we don't hold our tithe back from God. And we give our tithe. And then we give an offering. An offering is above the tithe, above the 10%. Then there's many of us that can give an offering to buy a fan for a ceiling to buy a, a copier or to buy money for the, for the roof. And we got some ideas that we'll share later on. So there's, not everybody can go, but everybody can pray. Not everybody can give, but many of us can. Not everybody can go. But you know what? If I was a betting man, I would bet you there are 30 people in here that can go. You say, Pastor, I don't have the money. I didn't say anything about money. <laughs> you say, Pastor, I don't have the skills. I didn't say anything about the skills. I'm saying that you give your heart and you're willing to go. I bet we and our family have 30 people that can go. I bet we do. I bet we do have 30 people that can say, yes, I will go. I can go. I will go. God's going to supply the money. God's going to give me the week off. Okay. Stephen didn't tell you. Stephen gave away his $200 work boots. $200 still toes. Stephen's not a rich guy. <laughs> Maria will tell you that. His family's not a rich, but it was the burden of his heart. And some of you may be saying, you know, God's been burning my heart to give some money. And it, and it may be that you just need to buy Stephen some new boots. <laughs> I mean, seriously, we're a family. We're in this together. And Stephen did not know I was going to say that. I'm just going to let you know. I probably just embarrassed him, but that's too bad. He'll have to get over it. But I bet there's 30 of us that can go. I bet there is. I'd help with all fear you to go. I'll go with you. 
I'll introduce you. I'll help you know what to drink, what not to drink, what to eat, what not to eat. I'll help you know that. I'll help you to know how to name the cockroaches. And oh, come on. You know. But you can go. And it's just that you have to determine before God, God, I will go. Oh, let go of some of that stuff you're holding on to. And let's go. Let's go. Let's go change the world for Christ. Let, let's, let's go change the world. Let's go do vacation Bible school at that school. Let's go do vacation Bible school at the church there on the property with Widows Mike Orphanage. Let's go fix their roof. Let's go buy them some goats. Let's go change the world. That the kingdom of God will be glorified. And that men will give glory to God when they see our works. Let's go change it. Let's change the world for Christ. I'm ready. I want you to go with me. I'm ready. I want you to go with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for what you did in my life. And it's, it's, I cannot explain, oh God what it was like to have Shakira, Sharona, some of these other children just to come up and, and hang on to you, to hug you, or to hold your hand, just to be holding your hand. You made a difference in our lives I think you I think you changed us more than you changed them. Don't let us go back to the way we were. Help our hearts to stay humble. And Father, I know it takes money. I wish it didn't. I I wish you would help. I wish you would just let me win the lottery. <laughs> Father, I'd pay for it all, but I also know that doesn't help our faith to grow. Helping our faith to grow is one day at a time trusting Jesus. One dollar at a time trusting Christ. You've led us. A need seen is a task assigned. And we saw lots of needs. So we're your family. Count on us. Even today, touch our lives as we give our tithe. We give what is responsible to give back to you. And then, Father, we give above that. Because you have blessed us, we want to bless the kingdom. Glorify your name. Glorify your name, O oh God. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 In this time of desperation Yeah.
great thing we have heard this morning of how God has worked at the Widow's Might Orphanage in Burnmount in Jamaica. Um, if you have questions, if you would like to know more about what it is, what happened, what we can do, uh, Stephen and Lathan will be up here after the service. Um, Pastor Norman will be out somewhere out back. But um, if you do have questions, please come up and ask. Um, the, the idea of us putting together 30 people to go, easy. Amen. Easy. Easy. God can do it. God can do it. We can do it through God. Oh, yes. So thank you so much for being a part of helping this team go. We were there last year and got to meet these kids, and it was amazing. Amazing. So you can meet them, too. And you can fall in love with them and bring a little peace home and leave a little bit more. So thank you. So let's, let's uh, stand up. Let's sing. Let's worship. Let's head on out. And let God just bless you richly this, this week as you go out. There's flyers for Mom's Night Out. Don't forget to pick those up on your way out. And if you got questions, come on up and ask. Thank <laughs> you.